Every autumn, you can find folks in trees picking apples at local orchards all throughout the country. Well, guess what? Some city folks are also going fruit picking, but instead of in an orchard, you're going to find them in trees above their neighborhood block. I'm Al Roker, and in this episode of My Life in Food, we'll meet artist Mark Dennis throws dinner parties featuring dishes made with insects. My name is Mark Dennis. I'm an artist, I'm a full-time professor, and I eat bugs. I've tried numerous insects, grasshoppers, crickets, beetles, Wax worms, fly eggs, silkworms, to name a few. Insects fascinate me. As a kid, I've always had a fascination with bugs. And there were many, many instances where I would go into the woods on my own and just investigate, turning over rocks, cracking off rotting branches, and looking at the various stages of insect life. I never told my folks this, but I did eat bugs. I wanted to know what they tasted like. interested in entomophagy, which is the practice of eating insects, because I began to realize that insects were a viable food source. It's pretty much common knowledge that insects do have protein and fat content. So who knows, in five years, a cricket potentially could be the other white meat. I think as I got older, I began to study a lot more regarding other cultures around the world, and they learned that people were eating bugs and in Africa and in Australia. And I thought, you know, why aren't we eating bugs here? Maybe we were not really perhaps living up to our full potential as Americans. A lot of people ask me, wow, you're the guy that paints the bugs and eats the bugs. Which came first? And I always thought that, oddly, eating the bugs came first. I understand why people are hesitant to eat bugs, but then I kind of bring it to their attention that they've pretty much already eaten a bug, because the FDA does allow a certain amount of insect parts in many grain products, rice products. So I think at one point in our lives, we've consumed many, many bug parts. So once I tell them that, they begin to sort of modify their thoughts on it and realize if this is already part of my diet, maybe I should just try it a little bit more purposefully. That's when the metamorphosis begins. In the summertime, when I'm not teaching full time, I offer a bug dinner once every two weeks. But for tonight's bug dinner, I have a variety of insects. But I would like to have the large crickets on hand. So I contact my supplier and they send it to an individual here in New York. I'm in Chinatown now to pick up my shipment of bugs that have arrived in from Thailand at this particular location. Hi, I'm Mark. With my interest in entomophagy now, I've met a variety of people. And within those circles of friends, I've made connections that can facilitate the shipments of insects. In this box is a shipment, I believe, of crickets in Thailand known as Jing Lead. And the crickets are relatively large, with the size of my pinky. So they're uh, rather meaty. There are many suppliers around the world that ship bugs, both alive and dead, you know, prepared for shipping, prepared for eating. It is not difficult to get bugs, per se, but it all depends on particular species or what you're looking for. But for the most part, there's a lot of insects available. So I'm really excited. I got my shipment of crickets. I'm gonna head home, and I'm gonna get these babies ready for dinner tonight. Now, these crickets from Thailand are special. They're very tasty. I always wanna sample one. I have my shipment of crickets that I picked up in Chinatown. And these have been preserved by being dry roasted. Now, this is about $50 worth of crickets. Now, these crickets here from Thailand are special. The crickets I get from here in America, I pay a lot less for. And they're very tasty. People often ask me, what do crickets taste like? Now, depending upon how they're prepared, naturally that's gonna play a role in how they taste. But for the most part, I'll say, I think crickets taste a little earthy. I always wanna sample one. Mmm, excellent. Gonna make a great dish. Kinda sweet. Time to start cooking. For 
tonight's bug dinner, I have a variety of insects. I'm expecting about 20 people for tonight's bug dinner. I don't really make anything based off a standardized recipe. I always try something new. I think my attraction to using bugs is that it's always exciting and surprising. And I think without the element of surprise, cooking is kind of a mundane task. So I'm going to take the crickets now, and I'm going to put them into boiling water. I boil the crickets first as a precautionary measure. And then I could saute them, fry them, roast them. But once I know they're boiled, I've pretty much killed any microbes that might be in them. OK, I think it's that time. Got to go change. My guests are arriving. They got to look a little nicer. I'm Marion Nessel. I'm professor of nutrition food studies and public health at New York University and author of Safe Food, the Politics of Food Safety. Now, we're not culturally attuned to thinking of insects as something yummy. There certainly are cultures in which they're frequently eaten, but it's not something that I'm particularly interested in. I've got choices that wouldn't be my choice. Insects don't weigh very much. So unless you eat a lot of them, you're not going to be meeting your nutritional needs for protein. And they certainly have all of the nutrients that are present in any living creature, but they're very small. So you would need to eat them in very large quantity. My guests should be arriving any minute now. My goal for tonight's bug dinner is to get guests in a safe, healthy, and happy environment in which to indulge. Hey, welcome. The bug dinners are through invitation only. So these are rather large crickets. Nice. Come on in. Welcome to the bug dinner. How you doing? Sometimes I'm concerned with the ick factor. I just believe that if you don't bring it up, let people talk about it amongst themselves. I'm sure they all come thinking it. I mean, my goal is to get them past whatever it is they have to move beyond. But I am very aware that there is an ick factor. So now that the crickets have been boiled, I am now going to place them in the oven. The biggest misconception of most of my guests is that they're not going to enjoy the meal. I would like to introduce you to a part of your meal tonight. These are wax worms. Wax worms. It's going to be wax worm fried rice, but I want to leave them out here for you to look at. An idea of what you're going to be eating later. These will be fried. When do you normally have an opportunity to eat wax worms? In an apple. In an apple, maybe. Yeah, you're right. In an apple. But then you storm back to the place you bought the apple and you say, it's got a wax worm here. <laughs> Can we eat the raw? Oh, yeah. Sure. I dare you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave you, too. I've never eaten a bug before at all. I'm down for it. I think that it's, oh, yeah, I'm down for it. Sorry, <laughs> baby. Two, three, baby. Do they pop? I oh, nice. <laughs> People will usually look around and see who eats first. The brave ones just kind of wolf it down, and then someone turns around and says, did you just eat that? The whole thing? Just, it's gone already? Yeah, yeah, I'm looking for seconds. When I hear that, I know the night's going to be good. I think there's a little part of me that likes to freak people out. I think I might actually have to go. <laughs> I present the dishes in a way that is visually appealing because it goes back to what and how I treat making paintings. Strike the eye, seduce the mind. This dish here has become sort of a signature for me at my bug dinners. They're called cricket cucumber pokies, where the crickets, nice and beefy, are going to be placed atop a cucumber with mango chutney. And it's typically eaten in one or two bites. So I'm going to serve you the first part of tonight's meal. You've got a lot of courage in you. Go for the biggest cricket on the plate. This should freshen your palates and introduce you to the uh, texture and to the flavor of tonight's meal. I let people come in to my house. I'm offering them a bug dinner, and there are many times where people will just gulp it down. Others will look at it, and they just take their time. They might try a little nibble, and then you ask their friend what it was like, and I think everybody has their own way of progressing through a meal. Really good. From my experience, people have come over and they've said to me, I don't know if I can really do this, you're going to be mad at me. And I said, well, you should try it. I mean, how can I get angry if you don't want to try it? But you're here, you're in my house, the dishes are being served. Try one. I think I might actually have to go. <laughs> no? The main reason why I could not eat that is because it just looks like this cricket was on its deathbed. OK, folks, so you have cricket and kalamata hummus with a dung beetle on top, so go for it. 
I never imagined eating bugs. It never occurred to me. So this is a very interesting experience for me. And so far, it's been fantastic. OK, folks, it's time for the entrees. Here are two large dishes. In the black dish is a waxworm stir-fried rice. In the white dish is a bamboo worm lo mein. Enjoy. To me, it's the best month I've watched. I have a very strong insect phobia. I want to make sure that I'm tasting what I'm here to taste, and I'm also challenging myself to get over an issue that I've always had. I think there's a little part of me that likes to freak people out, but I think that if I could introduce people to eating insects, they might, in turn, mention it in conversation. And, you know, that's how the world starts, with ideas. I never thought I'd be saying this, but I'm going for seconds. When they leave, they always say, you know, I was kind of wrong about what that was going to taste like. It's a lot better than I thought. So I'm bringing out dessert. These are chocolate chirp cookies, cricket flour, with about eight or nine small crickets in each cookie. So I want to thank you all for coming. I'm really happy that you decided to attend this bug dinner. And until next time. I want to raise a toast. Mark thank Dennis you. and his wonderful bug dinner. You're welcome. Uh, this is uh, amazing, and I really enjoyed it. So cheers. Okay. Thank you. I've never heard anyone in my family or friends say, you know, Mark, that's really strange or odd, or you know, why are you doing that? They just sort of accept it as part of my way of living. I try to explore and experiment and experience things that are new and fresh and enlightening. Everyone in my life who respects and loves me accepts the fact that I include bugs in my diet. And if I do say so, I think I'll have them myself. I believe tonight was a great success. People explored, they experimented, and they're definitely going to leave enlightened. And one of the best parts is I saved a cricket cookie for myself. For more information, go to cookingchannelTV.com.